You're now listening to Sound Talent Media. Check out more shows at SoundTalentMedia.com. Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm Matt Migaki, the vocalist of Cryptopsy and the host of the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast, where I sit down with fellow metal musicians. We talk all about their lives and music while sharing killer craft beers. If you've ever wanted to sneak backstage and share a beer with one of your favorite musicians, well, Vox and Hops is the podcast for you. This week on the podcast, I dropped a killer episode with Johannes Ekström of Avatar. There is this episode and over 440 other ones to help you enjoy life, metal, and craft beer. So what are you waiting for? It's time to become a Vox and Hops head. Cheers! Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the ToneMob.com podcast, the show about guitar tone and the people behind it. And today... My guest is Ryan McKay of Yellow Cake Pedals. You may know them from such things as the uh, Furry Burrito and the Fried Gold. Um, people have been digging on those pretty hard lately, so great to have you on the show today. How's it going? Hey, uh, it's going great. Um, thanks for having me. I mean, this is uh, this is my first podcast, so um, this is definitely new and uncharted territory for me, that's for sure. Eh, it's it's not that, not as weird as it first seems. So well, it's it's not it's it's not you know man it's not really being weird. It's like wow, somebody asked me to do a podcast. It's like wow, that's really like uh, yeah, sure. I just you know try to and just like you know do the best I can or whatever. So it's cool. I really I really yeah. really appreciate it, man. Oh, it's uh it's it's my pleasure. I I really enjoy doing them and and talking to everybody and uh, it's just been a a super super good time. So. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Um, hey, man, anytime, anytime. Yeah. So, uh, wh- what was the day like uh, in the uh, Yellow Cake headquarters? What's a day like? What's a, like yeah, an average or, day? Or I, I was talking about two days specifically, but yeah, we can talk an average day. Well, I mean, the thing is, is that um, I'm, I'm still, still very much like doing this in all my free time on the side. I mean, um, I, I have a full time job. So I do that and then, you know, and then I, and I come basically come home or whatever, whenever I get time and, and just crank stuff out. And then, you know, in the evenings and stuff and, you know, I'm doing a little bit kind of like during the day, take a break, you know, check the phone, do the Instagram thing, which, you know, and I'll just say, I don't know where yellow cake would be without having the reach that Instagram has gotten me with meeting people like yourself, uh, you know, other builders and getting, you know, the peop- other people on board to, you know, to, to take a look at what you're doing. And it's just been, it's been really, really big. And, you know, I've started that a year ago, uh, January, I started that in January, 2014 and, um, just networking slowly, but surely. And it's been, it's been really, it's been really cool. I'm just, so far enjoying the ride of just, you know, still doing this thing, still being able to do this thing and try to keep pushing it forward. So, right. It's been crazy. Yeah. I, I can totally agree with you on the, the Instagram thing. I, I would have been launching this show to crickets and not being able to, uh, I mean, I had some connections here locally just by nature of being a gearhead in the Portland area. And, right. Uh, and uh, so that, you know, I, I could have probably got a few people to do the show, but just like you say, getting people like yourself who I've never talked to before, the Instagram's just been super crucial. And then just right. being able to launch the show to people, to a big, you know, bunch of gearheads, because that's who follows me. Um, and well, hopefully how- people, di- you know, hopefully people dig it. So Right, yeah. And well, I, I mean, I because <clears throat> we just kind of just started talking, I haven't. Well, I listened to part of one to podcast. It was John from Creation, who you know he's just like he's he really you know he's great. I mean, love the guy. I met him at Nam. He actually got me a pass to get into Nam, so I could at least I didn't get a booth, so I could walk around and meet people and meet other builders. And man, just you know, just want to shout out to him and say thanks a lot again because I think I thanked him about like three million times, and he's like, enough, stop thanking me. It, <laughs> No problem. It's fine. And I'm like, of course he doesn't sound like that. His voice and he doesn't have that deep voice. He doesn't have 
it's not anything like that, but that's just, you know. And um, so, yeah, it's that was fine. just like, it's, it's fine. Stop yes. it. No, but um, he was just, he's just a great, great cat. And, you know, his dad, I met his dad, you know, because he talked about his dad and the woodworking thing. His dad's just a total, total sweetheart. So they're just two great guys and they're doing a really good thing over there. And uh, so I was just glad to be just to be able to get into NAM and meet all these great people, these other great builders. And it was just an overwhelming experience for somebody who's still trying to break through, who's still trying, who believes in what they're doing and trying to get it out there. And for everybody else, whether they're like at my level or even mid t or higher that are just like, so like, Hey man, yeah, man, they're, you know, everybody was really cool and real nice and just like cool to hang with and laugh and joke with. And I made some, it was like, it was like long lost friends. It was like people that like, you know, it was just amazing for me, for somebody that's just like a closet musician, just doing this, you know, flying by the seat of my pants. And right. I can't, you know, and you've been, on, I don't know, how long have you been on Instagram? Because I noticed you're following, you've got almost 10,000 followers, brother. I mean, dang. I, you know, and that is, I, I haven't been on very long at all, and I don't know, I mean, I think it's just because uh, everyone loves gear, and uh, I post um, a lot of gear uh, quite often, and I, I try to talk to people on there because I like talking to people, um, and I think that is probably why it's grown so quickly, you know, I, I really appreciate everybody on there that that reaches out to me and, and follows what I'm doing just because I, I love gear and I love people and I want, <laughs> I right. like the interaction. So I've, I've probably, I've only been on Instagram since, um, late March and that wow. was my first foray into social media of any kind, uh, whatsoever. And I didn't really know how it worked and <laughs> I didn't know anybody on there. None of my, um, or not, I shouldn't say none, but very few of my uh, kind of crew that I normally run with has any kind of social media either. So right. um, it's just like something I never really thought I needed. And then I started thinking about, mostly about this podcast was kind of the the big goal. Um, I was like, I want to do a gear podcast and how can I get people to listen to it? Right. And so I posted a picture of my Ampeg amp on Instagram and this just kind of started snowballing and uh like i say i appreciate everybody that's on there it's it's been a wild ride um i didn't even quite realize how powerful that platform was until i started getting on it on a regu very very regular basis so and you know what i don't post enough on there and i need to do more but i'll tell you what man i mean i don't have near the following that you do but it is a full time freaking job just to do that do you know what I mean? And that's crazy. But I mean, I enjoy doing it. I enjoy, I'm so thankful for, you know, all, everybody following, whether it be, you know, people that are fans of your stuff or whether it be other builders and we're all fans of each other. And it's just, it's really great. And I just hope to just keep it going. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I know, I know exactly what you mean. It, it's, it's, it takes a lot of, a lot of time. Fortunately, I like, doing it so that right. is right you know is kind of the the crucial part there i i like doing it so yeah yeah totally totally but yeah so anyways so yeah so today was just like work uh come home and just start working on stuff you know check the instagram feed um i just got shirts that came in yesterday uh so i'm selling shirts now um yeah, just just grinding it out. I mean, I don't have you know I don't have a, a workspace. I do everything in house, and and that's kind of and that works for me right now because it's just me. So I mean, I don't have to worry about you know all that other stuff that goes on. Like I know like there's other guys that are that are growing and they've got like a buildings and stuff, and that's just that's just you know wow. I I I I haven't even I can't even think that far ahead really. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. It just it it seems crazy, but obviously it's possible because mm. uh, lots of guys are doing it. It's 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 awesome. 
it is it is possible, but I think for myself, if I if I start getting too far ahead of myself when I feel like I'm still just starting to scratch the surface on getting uh getting out there, that I don't want to just like overextend myself. I kind of have to do it. I kind of take it as more like a one day, one pedal at a time type thing. You know, still mm-hmm. ca- still calling people, still trying to get the name out, still trying to just do my thing. Um, I'm doing the Nashville Gear Expo uh in in november um and um what else oh uh i'm not sure when this podcast is going to be released or what your turnaround is but probably i think next week maybe the pedal issue of premier guitar comes out and the fray burrito is going to be reviewed in that in the print aspect of things which is just really kind of weird and crazy to to see something that you've done or you're you're trying to do or whatever and it's like it's in a magazine and somebody's reviewed it and it's just like wow that's just like i can't believe it you know yeah i want to talk about that pedal for a minute because that's believe it or not i actually didn't find you through social media or anything like that first i first found that pedal um before i'd ever uh it was it was kind of funny so i seen that pedal at old town music in portland Mm -hmm. quite a while back and I thought, hmm, that looks interesting. And I didn't play it right away. I, I had got, I'm always running in there at the last minute before they close with some sort of specific thing that I need. Right. Uh, and so it's almost like it's like it's, instead of instead of like a gallon of milk and running into the store, it's just like I need this. I gotta go get it right before they close. Oh yeah, it is. It's it's just because of when I get off of work, uh, I, and when they close, it's like I can just barely make it there, like ten minutes before they close. Right. And, I don't know if Hank will ever listen to this, but he knows what I'm talking about. I'm always like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just really need this whatever fuzz pedal and or this whatever drive. That, and they're right. like, really? You need it? You need it that bad? I'm like, yes. I, I'm an addict. Just, just give it to me. Just and, give, but we're going to close. <laughs> it's like, I don't care. Yeah. I, just, get, just give it to me, okay? Just, I, I need it. It's like, but, like uh, getting, getting your fix. <laughs> oh, it, it's bad. But yeah, <laughs> it's, they, 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 they know. Yeah, they, they know who I'm. Yeah, they know exactly what's going on when I show up. They, all right, here's your thing. Get out of here. And uh, no, they're really, they're really cool. It's, just, it's just... no, they're 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 a great group. They're definitely a great group of guys over there. And I really appreciate but, uh, them for sure. But anyway, I seen your pedal, and then I finally got around to playing it um, one day, and I was like, ooh, that's going. Oh yeah, that's on the list. I gotta check that out. And then, like very shortly after that. Um, I seen that you like commented or liked on one of my posts or something, and I was like, "Oh, hey." Yeah, I can't remember how. I can't remember how. How that. How how I got how how we got connected? Did you did you like something that somebody posted that I? Man, I can't even keep track of it. Oh, you know what it was. It you know what it was. Um. Uh. Oh boy, he's gonna be mad at me. I'm forgetting his Instagram handle. Uh. Oh yeah, E Rock Five String. Yes, uh, that's what it was. Uh, yeah, his 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 real name's Eric, but um, isn't he? He's Par- he's Paragon Theorem, right? No. N- uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's Paragon Theorem. Mm-hmm. They they started following me for, yeah, and yeah. Yes. Okay, so this the dots are connecting, and I know he listened to this, so he'll probably be like snickering about this. But he always does these uh, um, these awesome uh beer and gear shots, which is. This thing that mm-hmm. some of us started doing on there, um, mm-hmm. and uh, he had the he had the furry burrito on there, and yeah, that's that's where we kind of first connected. Cause I was like, oh, dude, I was gonna buy that pedal, and then you were on there. Yeah, that's yeah. No one knows what we're talking about, but us at this point. But that's, that's yeah, fine. That's... Everybody, will catch you up to speed <laughs> later. All right, just just yeah. just don't. We're not losing you. Come on, just hang on. We're we're almost there. That's right. What? Hey, we're we're trying to tell how we met right this right is like a rom-com so <laughs> yeah right yeah rom-com <laughs> and it, you know what the thing is is it does sound it sounds really great for bass too i mean um i got a, there's a local guy here in town uh who plays bass just like you know cover bands or whatever and um you know he, that's his thing whatever he does and but he loves it for bass and that's just awesome because you know i mean it's i mean it's great for anything i think you don't have to just like pigeonhole yourself whether you're a bass player or guitar player with just like oh it's only got to be a bass pedal or it's or it's it's for bass guitar or for for guitar i mean 
sit down with something and just get crazy with it. It doesn't matter what it's really geared for, you know what I mean? Or what the, what it's marketed towards. This is a pedal for bass players only. You know what I mean? I just, Mm -hmm. I think that's when you get really cool, cool sounds and cool stuff. And where you just kind of let your mind just, and just let yourself go and just, you know, who knows what you can find or what, what's going to happen, you know? No, No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. We're always shoving guitar pedals into my bass player's chain. Like, on a very very regular basis, he's like he doesn't play with a lot of pedals. Right. And we're like, no, you want you want this this bass is too clean. We need to dirty this thing up. We need some square waves in here, and so we'll just <laughs> stuff things in his chain, whether he likes it or not. Yeah. And he's like, oh, that actually sounds sounds pretty cool. And then you're like, see, yeah, see, yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, that's crazy. He's he's starting to come around. He he's he's like he's like, oh yeah, I think I need to get a Russian muff. I'm like, yeah, I think you do. Been telling you that for two years but well, that, and that's the other thing too is it also depends on what kind of music you play obviously if you're like you know like a jazz bassist or whatever and you're playing like a three-piece four-piece jazz band obviously you're not going to be like hey man i need to get a like you know a fuzz pedal for this for this rig you know what i mean it's just if you're playing you know it, it, but it also i mean just with even just like rock i mean there's just so many different avenues you can go and and it, you know and like i've said i've said this to plenty of people there is so much great gear out there there really is so I mean, oh, it's it's awesome. It's it's awesome and insane, and and but the thing is, is it's not like it was where you know I remember back when I was a kid playing, and it was pretty much Digitech and Boss. Do you know what I mean? Right. As far as pedals mm-hmm. and pedals weren't really. I mean, it was just because at that point it was like the it was rack units and you know and you know hair metal and all that kind of stuff, and everybody was pretty much you know the straight tube distortion and whatever and i think because of the way technology has evolved and that people have decided you know to come just to start doing different things and the boutique company started slowly creeping up in the mid 90s i think i mean i'm just going by what i saw i mean it could have been before that i'm just going by what i saw in magazines and all of a sudden it's just like you know in the last 15 or so years it's just been nuts but then you also have gearheads like yourself and like everybody for the most part is turned into a gearhead because everybody's buying different stuff i mean people are buying one guy or one player whether it be a bass player or a guitar player is buying all sorts of different stuff and they're rotating things in and out or they're reselling them or they're holding on to them or they're collecting them or they're you know what i mean it's just all like it's never like you never really you don't see as much people as many people just married to one setup or one pedal board you know what i mean it's just kind of like i feel like it's just like that's kind of the way it's it's gone and i think that's kind of what has helped the um the industry flourish in that aspect you know what i mean yeah it's almost like i i just had this this thing come into my head it's almost like one of those sci-fi movies Mm -hmm. where where they introduce this new super drug and everybody gets hooked right it's kind of what I think. That's kind of what happened to the guitar playing and bass playing, well, just musicians in general population. In like, like you say, in the last fifteen years, like I think there's substantially more people, uh, quote unquote, you know, like chasing the chasing the tone dragon or whatever. Like right. I know I am. Like I and I and ten years ago I wasn't. I I I was like I got my I got my metal. Thing. You know, right? And you know, and the thing is too is that, I mean, it's just I think you've got also you've gotten more. You've, there's more choices, okay? So like you know, you've had the vote, the what is called the boutique pedal um, craze, which is still or whatever you want to call it, and then it kind of kind of cycled into amps, and you've got all these independent builders now. And they're great and and great stuff. And then you've got all these independent boutique builders now. Do you know what I mean? And it's just totally um, just gotten to a point where it's just like everybody's kind of trying it and everybody's doing it. And then, and I think the internet had to have been like a huge help for that because then you have people posting DIY stuff. And I think that, yeah. and that's kind of what hooked me was the DIY thing. And then I had an idea and then I was like, well, let me see if I can do it. And cause I mean, I'm not like, I don't have a degree in electronics. Okay. It's like, 
it's a process of what of just trial and error and like following my ear and that's basically the best way to put it you know um right i don't i you know i'm not i i'm not set i i don't i don't you know i just started doing it and then i was just like hey well i wonder if you know i can do something with this you know like if i if i have my mindset is like i wonder if i can just like turn into the next jhs or earthquake or well then no i mean if i'm doing that then i'm doing it thinking that way then you're doing it for all the wrong reason i mean right doing it because you love it and you have a passion for it whatever it is uh, building amps pedal boards pedals guitars you know whatever i mean there's a guy that i met at um at nam and he has he makes guitar strings and i still haven't yet to get a set from him because i've just been so crazy guadalupe guitar string oh yes yeah you've heard of him I have, and I've been. I'm. I'm definitely gonna grab a set. Um, Hand that's makes on them. My list. Hand makes these things, and was talking about them when we were hanging out after the Nam show one night or whatever. Oh, just totally nuts, man. The guy is just like, I'm like, wow, dude, you're that's awesome. You know what I mean? Just like, mm-hmm. you know, and you've got like, uh, and then you've got Gear Supply Company, you know, which which is a great con- great concept. You know, and I haven't I haven't tried their strings yet either because you know I want to because I met those guys and they're just just a great group of guys too and you know get strings fresh get strings to your door you know once a month or wherever you want them or whatever I mean in a little cute little pack and it's just fantastic and lightning and, yeah it's a very good idea and lightning bolts anything with a lightning bolt on it I'm pretty much freaking sold <laughs> kind of hence your fried gold uh. PCB. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I, and I can't even tell you. I don't even know where that came from. I, I can't really say it. And I was kind of like, it was a, it was an afterthought because the circuit was already done. Um, and at that point, I was just, it was just a board. And then I just kind of thought, I don't know if it was, I just thought like it needed more, or because I know that people are love the gear guts like myself, you know. And I was like, well, okay. It's an idea, and I was like, surely somebody's done something like this before. Because, and I still have yet to see it, and that's not to say that I'm like, oh my god, because I'm just like blown away that nobody's tried it. Because, like, I mean, how could it, how, you know, surely, I mean, somebody's done something crazy with the inside of a PCB. But I also thought, like, if people really dug it, then that's like an extra little cool, that's cool. But if the people don't, uh, if the pedal isn't well received, or if people don't like the way the pedal sounds, or they just think it sounds like, uh, you know, garbage. You know how you know how people are real picky, and I understand that. Um, then basically, the, the the lightning bolt would to me would be like a, a gimmick. So in some ways, I guess it was kind of a, a gamble. Do you know what I mean? Right. Where like if they mm-hmm. didn't like the way it sounded, and then they opened up and looked at it, they would be like, well, now you're just trying to you're just using that as an excuse to try to get sales or or whatever and it wasn't and it's a great pedal i think it's a great pedal the the people that i know that have tried it or have bought it they love it i mean so i mean and that's really great to see because it's like wow i guess i guess i really i mean i don't know if it's i got lucky there or just you know whatever but i still kind of blows me away a little bit that, that just you know just all of it really the whole thing in general. Yeah, the whole thing in general, because I really d- don't even know what I was doing when I thought of the, the lightning bolt. But then once I got, I, I got, I w- didn't know what, really what I was doing. But once I got wrapped up in just the idea of doing it, I was like, I just want to see what it looks like. Because this, you know, like I said, right. the pedal was already done at that point as as far as the sound goes, the circuit goes. But I just want to know what it looks, what it's gonna look like. I bet it looked pretty cool. And then I was just like, yeah, yeah that's cool. And I was just like, all right, well, you know, I mean, you're putting that out there, and you know you're basically still an unknown and, you know, trying to have gear out there with the self stuff out there with the rest of everybody else. And, but people have given me some feedback and I was just like, wow, really? Cause you know, I don't test these pedals through all these different amps that are out there. I mean, it's just, you, you just can't, I mean, I guess you can, right. But I mean, I just don't have that, you know, I have one amp that I use to, t- to run everything through to test it. It's an early seventies Fender twin. Um, and I use heavier strings than most people. I use like 11s. 
And mm-hmm. me too. Yeah, and so like I mean, cuz mm-hmm. I know a lot of people, you know, are there's there's 9s and 10s and 11s and you know, people tune down and all that kind of stuff, but like I just for me it's a fuller sound. So there's people that use lighter strings than me that get the same out of it, you know. I played on it, played on my pedals through um lighter strings and I don't like the way it sounds, but it's just not cuz it's not the strings, it's just the way I don't I just don't like the way the strings sound. Not yeah. full enough. Well, I I just started playing heavier string. Like elevens is is as pretty much as light as I go. Um, some things I got twelves. I don't th- I don't play thirteens anymore. But but elevens and twelves are pretty pretty much what I play. And and I <laughs> I didn't go to it with a with a I need this because of the tone uh, mindset. I started playing elevens when I was first starting out in my you know, hardcore and punk rock days because I kept breaking strings. Right. Because I played, I just beat the tar out of them just like, right. just like I was trying to kill the guitar and I kept breaking strings and it was getting old. So I was like, well, I guess I'll go to some heavier strings and that'll solve the problem. Right. And then I just got used to that sound and feel when I did start caring about what it, the, the actual tone sounds like. And then I tried stepping down just like you say, and it's just not for me. And, you know, some people can play light strings and they sound monstrous that's just not me right like so. i still don't get like i don't still still don't get how eddie van halen can use nine gauge strings and like for an example and like sound like what he does but i mean obviously you know his probably his eq on his amp set differently and just whatever and he's just got that whatever whatever he's got working for him and you know for me i'm you know like you said like that was the other thing for using going up to 11s is because um, I break strings, you know, I, I play pretty, I, you know, you mash pretty hard and you break strings. So it's just kind of like, and you know, it's the last thing you want to do, whether you're playing at home or in, a, you know, anywhere and just all of a sudden string breaks and it's like, oh man, really? Mm-hmm. Like now, come on. Yeah. It's like, come on, man. Come on. And I don't change my strings all the time or often enough, you know? So it's kind of like, it's, you know, cause because I just don't, and <laughs> yeah, I know. Me, yeah, and... <laughs> so, so it's right. So it's just kind of like you want to know at least, at least they're old and worn down that they're not going to snap on you. I mean, they still do occasionally. Once you, it's like, yeah, I really let this one go too long. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and then then I got a host of other problems. By then, like, oh, my fingerboard's all, ooh, got to get out the old cleaner. This is going to get gross. Right, but you right. Know. <laughs> no, I just let it. I just let the fingerboard just whatever. I'm, I just, just love marks. It's just you know, yeah, right? Somebody <laughs> posted. Marks. Somebody posted. I was. I think it was on Instagram. I can't remember who it was, but there was a picture of a uh, somebody's old vintage guitar, and the fretboard was just dirty, and you, you could just see the. It was just like the dirt, and then clean, and then dirt, and clean. I guess that's the best way to describe it, and. I was, right. I was just like, actually, that's kind of cool. I wouldn't clean that. I'd just leave that the way it is, man. Just mm-hmm. totally fine. I can get on board with that. Yeah, totally. Sure. <laughs> so I better I better dig into my my classic question with you. Okay. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see we we'll see how how that goes for you. So I'd like I'm I I'm serious. I'm genuinely curious whenever I bring somebody on that I haven't talked to before. It's I want to know what the what the backstory is like. How did you get to doing what you're doing today? Oh boy, yeah. Um, wow. That's a, how did I how like well how did I just decide that I just wanted to build pedals or whatever? Well, well, I kind of like to go even a little further than that into like the musical. Oh, backstory. okay. Like, like when you started playing in bands, oh, yeah. and then how that progressed into. Or or whatever you played, where obviously you're pl- playing guitar some in some regard, and that translated into a pedal company at right, some point. Right. So I, I kind of want to hear the whole story. Uh, music background. Well, I mean, um, my fam. I come from a family that's not musical whatsoever. Um, I took trumpet lessons because I remember. Now I think about. Yeah, I remember you guys talked about it with John on the last podcast. Uh, and talking about, like, I wanted to play saxophone, and it was like, they come around to these schools in elementary school and, you know, try to get people to test out instruments and see who can, wants to join the 
the elementary school band and all that kind of stuff. And so I was like, I want to play saxophone because I thought saxophone was cool. You know, I'm fifth grade. I don't know anything. You know, I don't know what I'm doing. And uh, uh, so they're like, no. And then he looks at me and he goes like, here, puck up your lip or whatever. And I did that. And he's like, blow through his mouthpiece, like that same thing that like you've heard before. And uh <laughs> He's like, yeah, you can play. You're gonna play trumpet. I'm like, oh well, sure, okay, I guess. I didn't really want to, but so I played trumpet for um, well into high school, and I pretty much between my junior and senior year, I mean, I did jazz band, I did marching band, and all that stuff. Um, that I just kind of, you know, I listened to jazz. Grew up listening to, to jazz through that. Uh, Doc Severinsen was, you know, I had a private lesson teacher and. Uh, he uh, introduced me to, he would take uh, old vinyl records of Doc Severinsen and make, make tapes for me, you know, and um, I'd love that stuff. But I mean, I, towards the end of my, I guess my tenure as a trumpet player, I just became just burned out on it, tired, the whole, you know, felt, feeling like I'm being made to practice when I just don't really care to anymore. And then like that whole, you know, discovering guitar, um, People, there's, you know, those guys in the jazz band, there's guitar players in the jazz band, and they're, like, in between, like, playing jazz, they're, like, rocking out a little bit, and you're just kind of like, man, I want to do that, you know what I mean? (laughs) I Mm -hmm. I totally want to do that, and I just decided that I wanted to, and then uh, there was another kid in band who played trombone, and he had a guitar, and he played guitar, and he had this, like, really crappy, like, Series 10, you know. He wants to play metal. It's funny because, you know, he's he's like kind of metalhead and has a crappy Series 10, three single coils. And, you know, if it's anything that doesn't s- says metal, it's three single coils. You know what I mean? At least that's how I interpreted that, you know, to me. Metal, metal is humbuckers. It's, it's not it's not single coils. But back, back then, I'm oh, sure I, single, well, single coils. Well, but single okay. coils. Na- we, we'll just agree to disagree. But single, coil, that, but single yeah. coils now, you know, you're talking like big fat P90s and stuff. You can totally get nasty with that stuff. That's true. Um, but, you know, but I just, you know, back then, the way those pickups were wound and stuff, being a Series 10, you know, it just didn't sound, <laughs> it didn't sound good. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? A, <laughs> yeah, a, solid, yeah, I, a crappy, yeah, small 12-inch speaker through a solid-state amp and, like, a Digitech Metal Maniac ain't going to cut it. You know what I mean? It's great to learn on, <laughs> but it's just like, you know... Looking back on it, it's just like, yeah, well, you got to start somewhere, too. So, I mean, but that's how, how he, and he uh, definitely got me wanting to play guitar. And then, you know, seeing Eddie Van Halen on Live Without a Net or whatever, which would, that uh, that video had been out several years, you know, before I ever saw it. And just watching him do that kind of stuff, I was just like, wow, I want to play guitar. And so... So I started playing guitar. I bought a Washburn. Yeah, I totally stepped up from his Series 10, and I bought a Washburn um, KC, <laughs> KC-10V, single humbucker, one volume knob, like super, super lacquer finish, super heavy finish on the back of the neck. You know what I mean? And um, Oh, yeah. And I've still got it. It's kind of in shambles, but I've still got it. I had it modded out. I had some guy put a Kaler on it, locking tremolo. Um which was like at the time, you know, in retrospect, probably not the best uh, thing to do. Should have got like a more of a Floyd Rose style, but you know, I went with what he said would work and I just, you know, but changing strings on that thing was just a total pain in the butt, man. Oh my God. I hated it. Oh yeah. I, Oh, I'm glad I never went down that road. I've watched, I've watched the struggle. And I'm like, that is not for yeah. me. Yeah, and the regular <laughs> Floyd Rose was always easier, but like the Kalers, whatever, just for me, I just didn't really much, I just, it was such a pain. And I used locking trims for a long time, not a long time, but, you know, for a while. And then I just started branching out and playing either different music or wanting something different and like, you know, mostly just a hardtail, uh, I'm a hardtail guy now, or a tunematic bridge or whatever, um. Right. But yeah, um so yeah, so it was just guitar and then from there on and you know, I I can play drums a little bit, but I'm not um I'm not like I'm not a drummer by any stretch. I mean, I can probably keep a beat, but I'm not like uh there's an, yeah. I'm not going to be doing any fills or anything like that to blow anybody's mind for sure. 
But, um, yeah, and just, like, you know, and then buying pedals and experimenting with pedals uh, and having... I don't have this mon, monstros, monstrosity of a pedal collection. Because at the time, uh, I was inspired by some of the stuff I was listening to, but the pedals that I had, I didn't really much like and one of my biggest pet peeves on some of the pedals that I own was the output volume was just never never enough do you know what I mean like you turn a pedal on you max out the Mm -hmm. volume and it's just like all right we're why is it killing my it just kills just total volume drop still it's just and that's what I noticed but I also was not comfortable opening up a pedal uh and trying to modify it at the time so I started to do research online and started to look at stuff and see how stuff was put together. And I started to just tinker around with my own stuff and ideas of what I wanted. And, you know, just just a plethora of information out there to just learn, you know. And I just that's kind of where the furry burrito started. That was the first one. That was um, – I had built a couple project pedals just for fun. But, like – then I wanted something that could do what I wanted it to do, I guess. I like I had this idea of the sound in my head that I wanted. And basically what it turned into, the furry burrito, is actually kind of I don't want to say quite the opposite, but like not exactly what I intended. But as it grew, working on it and stuff, uh and tweaking this and fixing that and changing this and deciding this, that and the other thing. Um it was like, yeah, that's even better. You know what I mean? Because I think, because oh, yeah. I think initially the furry burrito was inspired by um, Queens of the Stone Age, Mexicola, and it's like if you listen to, if, oh, yes. if you listen to that <laughs> song, whether it be a live version like from Bob's Garage or the the initial the rec- the studio version, it doesn't even come close to the furry burrito the way it sounds. I'm not even, you know, it's just not. It just turned into its own thing. And I'm, you know, and I and I'm happy with it. It sounds great. Uh, that pedal sounds great tuned down. You know, it sounds great standard tuning. I mean, it's just to me, it sounds, it's it sounds really filthy tuned down. I love the fact that it had. I was able to get that warmth out of it, where it feels it doesn't feel like, you know, you know how some pedals there's like those old Boss metal zones that are really plasticky or whatever. I don't know if it's metal zone, but oh, oh, geez, let's <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, those are so yeah. We don't need to get into that. Right. Everybody knows. Right. <laughs> or the met, or the metal maniacs from Digitech cuz I used to have one. But um yeah, um so it just kind of started from there and I was like, well um I kind of want to see if I can see if I can try to maybe sell some. And at the time when I was selling them for several years actually I was etching all the boxes with the with the design when I've gone, I had gone through a couple different versions of the pedal, but the circuit was pretty much the same. Yeah, it's pretty much the same. And, um, well, I kind of wanted to start and I would sell a few here and there. I wouldn't sell very many at all, really, you know? And I was like, well, um, I kind of need to make a decision here. This obviously, you know, I'm keep doing this and I'm spending money to, to try to do this and etch boxes, which is by hand is very labor intensive. And if it doesn't come out right, then it's really heartbreaking. So I was like, well, (laughs) and I had actually kind of uh, dabbled a little bit with a vendor rep uh, based out of Nashville, Brandon Carswell from Elevation Boutiques, who's just a great, great guy. And when I was etching him and he uh, believed in this, he believed in the product. He really, he really liked it. And he, he reps several really great pedal company and and here i am just a small guy which and still i am still the small guy whatever and uh you know and so i decided i i would just do a few here and there and still trying to figure out how to like get my name out there and whatever so then i just decided that uh last spring of not this year but of 2014 it's like i'm gonna start getting you know I'm going to have to relinquish a little control and just get them powder coated and drilled and whatever. And so I can just start, you know, um, 
trying to push these out the door and get more of a dealer type base going instead of just the, this whole direct thing, you know. And, um, you know, because some of the early Fury, Fury Burritos, some of them that are out there, like the really early ones, I mean, even the circuit boards were made in-house. Like, to- oh, total, wow. okay. total, like, you know, ferric chloride, you know, drilled, you know, had a little, have a little drill press to, to, to drill everything out. You know, I can't, I have a box of just prototype circuit boards that I have just, that I have made of the circuit board that I've, I've etched my own circuit boards and whatever boxes, like a huge box of just like all this, these things that I've just built or different variations of the furry burrito or of the fried gold or whatever. And a couple other little things here and there, but you know, that's time consuming. So, you know, so it's just, um, so I had to make a decision. I was like, well, do you want to, do you believe in this? Yeah. You want to do it? You, or if you believe in it, you should, we need to do it. You know, you can't just be sitting around. You got to see if, you know, we can see how far we can take this and see what happens and see what the response is and all this kind of stuff. And, um, it's been just, you know, the last year, last year was just trying to get the word out and this year still getting the word out. Um, got introduced to some really great people through Instagram. Um, Rick Sell from um, Pure Salem Guitars was a huge boost for me. Uh, oh, nice. He, yeah, their stuff looks killer. I know. And he was really just, uh, he's just a sweetheart. Um, and he's the one that got me connected with somebody from Premier Guitar. Um, to to And I was just getting a few little dealers here and there. Uh, at the time, late last year, he got me connected with somebody from your guitar and, you know, and I started talking to them and, um, sent them a pedal to do a review. And here we are, you know, uh, I'm not sure, like, you know, a review for a premier guitar and the pedal issue is going to be in there. And it's just like, wow. And, you know, I don't know where I would be, uh, without, a, a, a help from somebody that like has tried your pedals and likes them. And it's just like, totally like, Hey man, you need to, you know, let me help you. You know, because I, I, you're doing a good thing, you know, and that's really great. And I want to, and I definitely want to be one of those guys for other people too. You know what I mean? I mean, if somebody, pay it forward. If somebody's willing to be like, hey, just, and it's, it may not even be a big effort for them or a big deal for them to do it. Just, but it's, that's just helpful to everybody. And it's just like everybody kind of taking care of each other. And everybody wants everybody to succeed and, and to make it work, you know, because we all started from somewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah, pretty much everybody started in a garage on, you know, uh, or a basement or a kitchen table or whatever, Uh you know, that's where even, you know, the biggest guys in the, you know, quote unquote, you know, boutique world started that same way. So I think that really kind of helps foster this, this uh, DIY, not really DIY, but um, just this helpful culture, you know, that uh, I think is really great about. Uh, all yeah, this, it so. is, and it, it, the thing that's crazy to me, man, is that like you know, it. I was wondering because I'd never done Nam before or been around other. I had really ever been around other pedal builders or you know anything like that. Was worried or thought like, was it going to be like, hey man, who are you? You're you getting into my, getting into my territory, man. You're like on my turf. Like we got like the like the sharks and the jets here. We're going to do like West Side Story. <laughs> you know what I mean? Snapping the fingers and all that kind of stuff. Like who, you know oh, what I yeah. mean? And everybody's like, Hey, but That's everybody's exactly like, was going everybody was open, open, <laughs> open arms and stuff. You know, um, there was no, we weren't doing musical numbers or anything like that, you know, from West side story, but, uh, everybody was just wants, everybody is just real cool with each other. And I just was so like blown away just by that, that I was like, wow, that was, that was just so cool to see. Cause you know, I mean, I'm doing this myself and I don't really have any real, um, connection to the, to the music world. You know, I know a couple local guys, do you know what I mean? But I don't like have this like totally out there and, you know, I have musical connections or I have this background cause I, you know, I didn't play in a band and tour around small parts of, you know, the tri-state area or whatever. Do you know what I mean? We're speaking. There's a lot of guys that that have done that know people through that kind of stuff, and that's how they can kind of get their product out there when they do something, you know. And I just and I'm just right straight from the bottom, 
to just it's you know to try to get up there and it's been small steps forward but it's it's been forward so i mean to me that's you know and i am an impatient person but like i had to learn a long time ago <laughs> that you know what if it's just a little bit forward then you know what awesome as long as we're not going backwards man yeah for sure but I, so let's um let's touch on the pedals themselves real uh-huh. briefly, just because like a lot of people aren't, probably aren't familiar with what you got going on. So let's talk about we've been talking about the furry burrito a lot. So let's actually tell you want you go ahead and tell people what that actually is as far as an effect. It's goes. like a it's like an overdrive slash a fuzz pedal, um, with more of an emphasis on a fuzz, but not probably like that that. Uh, it's an IC based fuzz. It's not, it's, it's really hard to explain because people do it so much, but other people that play it just explain it so much better than me. But, um, and it's like a, it's got a little overdrive knob. It's got a gain knob to, for your, for a little bit of that fuzz. And then the, the clear blue, um, led that lights up when you turn it on is like a trim knob to kind of starve the voltage to kind of get that nice little breakup going, you know, so you can kind of get that little bit of a fuzz thing a little bit, maybe, depending on how loud your amp is, a little bit of oscillation type, subtle oscillation. You mix that with like a delay or echo. It gets kind of funky. Um, you know, a fat switch for your thickness. Uh, it's just pretty straight. I mean, in some ways it's, it's pretty straightforward for the most part, but um, not as straightforward as the fried gold because I mean, this is obviously four knobs and a trim knob and a, and a toggle switch for fat. But like to be able to kind of just adjust between your gain and your drive to get to kind of just where you want. It can, you can just go totally full out and just it'd be really it's just really nasty or just kind of back it off a little bit. And that's that's how I played it most of the time. I would back it off, you know, because I knew it could do that. But when I was playing with it, it was like, let's get gross. And right. <laughs> and then just just going uh, and that's and the other thing that's how that's how and I the other thing too is that one of the biggest my biggest thing was is that like um i like plenty of output volume i like to have more than i need just in case you never know and i would like you know i don't i want don't want to take any output volume away from anybody so i want it to be if you need more volume it's there if you don't then that's cool i mean you know but i'd rather have more than what you need available than like not enough you know what i mean mm-hmm and, you know, it's basically definitely a pedal that needs to be played loud. I mean, you get more, I think, probably with any pedal, really. You get more out of anything the louder it is, the louder your amp is. I mean, you can kind of get the point across, you know, playing bedroom volume or whatever. Um, but, like, being loud, it's the, the best headroom, you know. And that's where you get pretty much everything. And... um I've heard both. I've heard right. both pedals live from other people playing them. You know, even if they're lo- whether they're local or not, and it's funny because like I'm like I've, that's great, but I don't hear that when I play it. You know what I mean? I've had demos done by Gearman Dude of the Furry Burrito, both incarnations actually, uh, the etched version and this and the version that's now, um, and I don't hear that when I play it. Do you know what I mean? It's just that's and it's crazy to hear it a different way when somebody else puts their fingers on their on their guitar and does their thing. And it's most definitely. Yeah. That's actually yeah, that's the first demo I seen of it too cuz I seen the the picture at Old Town or not excuse me. I seen the picture or blah blah. I seen the picture on their on their Facebook. I seen the pedal in person when I went to go get something else. Went home, fired up a de- fired up the the old YouTube found the Gearman dude demo, so I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, that doesn't sound like what when I play it. It doesn't sound like right that either. But I so. think that's great. That's because then it's like it's it's everybody can interpret it their own or play it and dig it in their own way. Because um, yeah, I did a, a Gear Talk did a demo last summer. Rogue Guitar Shop has done a demo of it. Um, Gear Demogram, which I haven't seen anything from them in a long time. I'm not even sure if he's still doing stuff. And then Gear Man, dude, um, and they all, you know what? And they all sound different, and mm-hmm. that's great. That's that's kind of what I want, really. I don't want it all to sound the same. I mean, because every because 
Yeah, that gets old. That gets old. Well, not only that, but it's it's also got enough. There's mm-hmm. also enough versatility there where you can. There's plenty of different ways you can play that pedal, and you know it's kind of like a a medium overdrive to like a muff like sustain, you know, um, but not too but not too gross gross, you know, not like not that muffs aren't, they're not, but I mean just for that application of what this pedal is, um. Yeah, plenty of it's plenty it's plenty versatile, um, and it's like the first one. So it's kind of like you know, it's like your baby. It's like your firstborn. So I mean, <laughs> I like them all the same. So it's I mean, because each they're each in their own category. But you know, and since it takes me for since I'm doing this all by myself, and it takes me for forever to do anything to get anything like accomplished as far as like a new pedal. Um, I had been working on the fried gold for off and on for a couple years and finally you know it was finally released in may and it and it was nice to have another pedal so it doesn't really look like you know it's it's just it just i think it's really helpful especially when you're trying to get out there to like if you're trying to get on a dealer shelf uh where they're kind of like okay this this they've got two pedals i mean obviously they're probably going to do some more and hopefully if they're if they stay around long enough um and and uh you know so it kind of like is from from that point of from that point of view it's kind of it's really helpful and and it's been that one's been received uh really well too um like so let's talk about that one because i have not got to play that one i've just watched demos so let's let's talk about that pedal um that one is a straight ahead uh overdrive that really it, it didn't I didn't mean for it to be an overdrive uh, but it, it just kind of just kind of how it worked out that way once I it's like that whole it starts here and then it ends here the process and I wanted it to be like the full max gain to have a bit of a blown out um almost fuzz fuzzish type sound but it's really wonderfully voiced um for any you know front end clean uh, tube amp and it mixes really well uh, with uh, to to boost the distortion channel. There's a guy that locally plays here. He uses a dual rectifier um, combo and he uses that to boost his uh, to, for solos and for boost or just whatever. And he even has an epi boost on his board, so he just uses it for all different things. Um, and just absolutely um, loves it. And that's just really cool to see because he was using a tube screamer before and he didn't know, I guess, you know, he just like, Hey, try this out. And he, he just, he's like, I'm going to replace my tube screamer. Well, like, and I'm not taking it away from the tube screamer because you know, that's just like, that's an icon. But like, that was really, that's wow. That's kind of, kind of blows you away a little bit. Um, was able to get some, some extra traction to get people to notice it by giving a couple away to, um, or I gave one away to Tones Chaser. He's a luthier for Stuart McDonald, Eric. Um, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, I follow. Him. Yeah, you do. Okay, yeah, great guy. Mm-hmm. And so I just was like, all right, you know, here I want you to check this out because early on in my Instagram days, uh, I started following him because he actually somehow started he liked one of my photos or something. So. And I started following him and like mostly that his band, the D rays is like kind of like the surf rock kind of whatever. And he's, a, you know, just a talented luthier and he's got tons of vintage gear and he is just like the man. And, you know, he, um, he really loved the pedal. He really, really loved the pedal. He got me to, to send both of the pedals that I make to tone quest report. And they did a review in their uh, magazine that came out of the back in August. Um, so, and that was really cool. He, he just, I mean, he'll occasionally you see a picture of that pedal on his board before he does a show. Whenever, if he ever posts anything, and you know, he's he said it was just like he just really liked. And it's me for somebody that's been doing stuff that he's been doing and playing pedals and using gear and does what he does for a living. To really like, for them to really dig, for somebody like that to really dig your stuff is really validating. That like it's like, wow, you know what I mean? 
and always, always, always have I just been so appreciative and humbled by anybody that has just been just great about whether it is what you're doing or just like trying to be helpful and all that kind of stuff. And it's just, to me, that's just, wow. Just, you know, cause you know, you don't know how your stuff is going to be ever be perceived when you're starting out. Cause I feel like I'm still starting out. I mean, I have no budget. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I had to. I had to. Both. I, I still. I had to scrape the bottom of the barrel <laughs> to get. Know if people even right. Like I had to scrape the bottom of the barrel to get stickers <laughs> printed and these T-shirts printed. Um, you know, with most of them, I'm probably gonna end up probably be giving away. But I need to sell just enough so I can like recoup what I've spent for this round of T-shirts and and um and order some more. You know, so I mean, to kind of try to keep that going. But it's just you know. One thing after another, man, I guess. Oh, yeah. I I, I do know what you mean by all that. Uh, so far, I've just been spending money. Right. Uh, both on my, on my gear addiction and just, you know, I'm not very, you know, server costs and blah, blah. There's this stuff associated with it's It's not, like, extreme, but it's like, oh, there's... Okay, well, there's six hundred bucks, right? You know, and then there's and and it's like ah, oh, and I, but you know what? I I I'm gonna keep doing it as long as I possibly can because I do love it and uh, it's gotten me to you know um, to be able to do things like this and and to talk and meet to so with so many people. Um, I'm gonna do it as long as I can, but I I do feel the uh, the budget crunch pain. Uh, that you are feeling, I'm I'm right there with you, brother. I mean, yeah, I've had to sell um to keep it just to keep this thing going. Uh, not so much this last half of the year, but the last year and a half, you know, before probably like the last year and a half. I mean, I've been selling gear to kind of just try to keep it going because I'm putting everything I make back into it. You know, sure, I'll treat myself once in a while to like a beer or two. You know what I mean? Like, hey, Yellow Cake's paying for a beer. Awesome. At the bar, that's nice. <laughs> nice work, man. Keep it going. Maybe next time we'll get six, okay? But, right. <laughs> but but uh, but, oh, but you know it. But I but the gear was stuff I wasn't using. You know, amps and that I just didn't use. They were collecting dust, and there and most of it was really good stuff. But I was like, you know, I'm gonna I want to keep this going. So I mean, and then holding on to something I'm not using at this point is just silly. Um, because I might as well try to get something out of it and buy more stuff or buy more parts or, you know, or whatever. So, you know, but yeah, keep, keep the beast marching. Yeah. Keep, forward, I gotta keep this thing. Time. I gotta keep it. I just gotta keep this thing marching forward. And, uh, you know, um, yeah. Cause the thing is like, I, I haven't told my parents that, you know, the, the reviews coming out and I kind of want to surprise them and just like send them the, cause they, you know, cause my dad's kind of more like electronic, electronically proficient than I am because of what he does. And so like to him, he sees what I do or trying to do or whatever. And he sees it as like, it's really cool, but also he doesn't really get it because he's, he's not a musician. He's not a guitar player. And to him, it's all noise. So, but like, to, I, I don't know. I just kind of thought it'd be kind of neat to send him a magazine of like, Hey, guess what? I was in, in a magazine. I mean, it's really cool. I mean, it doesn't mean that like just because you're in a magazine that oh gosh, guess what? You know, the phone's gonna start ringing off the hook or something like that. No, it, it doesn't. <laughs> right. It doesn't. It doesn't mean that. But it's just in some ways, it's kind of a still a small victory that somebody reviewed it and you know hopefully gave it a good review and and it just kind of puts you out there. And so that's kind of a cool thing, you know. So you mean to tell me that as soon as that article comes out, you're not gonna be like lighting up cigars with like benjamins or anything you're not that's not how it works i'm so confused no, yeah no it doesn't you know man it doesn't mean you made it okay i just oh well huh. huh. i guess i've been i just huh. don't know well maybe it does i don't know i've never been reviewed in anything like that i mean the tone quest report <laughs> which is still new and then this one i i, I mean maybe it does but I, I i if i if i plan my life around it's going to mean something in the long run or something then I think I'm kind of going about it the wrong way. It's a well, huge. Yeah, I mean, I, well, you know what you can tell your parents. This is this is this is this is really cool. You can be like, "Hey, I just spent 
you know, like an hour talking to this dude on the internet about gear and look how cool right. it is. There's like twelve people there's like twelve people that are gonna listen to that show too. So. And twelve and twelve people listen to it. So that's right. I I'm yeah, freaking right. just made it. Boom. Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You can just you can you can call it good at that point. You're like, Dad, look, this guy on the internet said uh, my fuzz pedal's cool, so there, there you go. go. Right. <laughs> no, he he digs he digs what I do, but he just he just doesn't you know he's not like he's not like if I play it for him he's like wow man that's really cool he's like to him he's just like man that's all noise but he you know he's freaking seventy one I mean <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah my my dad is a guitar player and he still doesn't understand my my fuzz pedal obsession so really yeah there's that yeah. Well, he's a, he's a, he's a country dude. Oh, and, and, well. And, and well, and and I am too. Um, well, I should clarify that. I don't mean uh, like Luke Bryan because that stuff's garbage. I mean like real country, like um, like Wilco, like I just, like I just, well, not like Wilco there, but you know, I mean the like alt country more. Well, what's so mind-boggling to me now? I'm just gonna lose. I'm now I'm gonna only have six listeners, but the. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad to me like that alt country has to be called alt country when 99% of it is more country than what's on the radio like i don't understand how alt country right. became and it's also how real <laughs> i just don't get it i, I mean know. i'm kind of like that i'm kind of like that too but it's also really not my place to like sit there and be like well you know this is cool and this sucks do you know what i mean i mean and i try to keep myself in check with that because with all, with all, with all music, with all genres or whatever, or however it's being labeled now. I mean, I mean, there's just stuff that I like, and there's just stuff that I'm like, no, not, I don't think so. You know. Well, you know, I I try to keep myself in order too, but I I that that is one thing. I grew up listening to like Waylon right. and, and and stuff like that, and 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 if I have to hear about like one more pickup truck and a moonlight and Friday nights and and Coors Light, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go crazy. But right, no, I know because I grew up listening to Waylon and Willie and, um, hmm. you know, Lukenbach, Texas. I mean, my dad had all that stuff. George Jones, uh, you know, John Cash, all mm-hmm. that stuff. I mean, that's the the, the, the AM Gold country man. Um, and then it yes. just kind of like went on a little bit on its when it did its own thing. Now, like you know what, man, I don't like Sugarland. I'm not gonna buy any of their albums. And I'm not a big fan by any stretch, but I'm sure they're good people. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so it's just kind of like, you know, are. but I'm in not, so I'm not going to sit here and be like, well, you guys are just like the devil. You know, I'm not going <laughs> to. You guys are ruining No, no I'm not going to uh, do that, man, because it's just not going to. It's kind of counterproductive. So. I won't do it on the air. <laughs> I'm, oh, oh, you, you, no, you just like outed yourself. <laughs> Dude, as soon as he gets done with his podcast, he's totally going to be ripping them. <laughs> Uh, if, hey, you know what? If Florida Georgia Line listens to this, they they can just know that I don't like their music, and uh, that's 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 just how I feel yeah. about it. Good luck with your lives. Yeah. They're making more money than right. I am. So yeah, it's, like, it's not like they're going to be missing us, <laughs> missing you as a fan. Like, oh man, we totally wanted him on I, our side. Yeah, you know what? He was just so cool. He had twelve people listening to his internet show, and now there's six. Out of six. So. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like by the end of the show, it's gonna be like nobody. Like you'll listen to this. Episode, I'll listen to this episode, and then uh, I'll like yeah. I'll like share with a couple friends, I'll... or I'll share it on like Instagram or something. Like, hey man, check out the podcast. Uh, just fast forward that part where we like, start talking about country. That... If you like country, like well, uh, this guy's kind of a country music uh, bigot, so don't listen to him because he's a, he's a jerk. Country about music that, bigot. Anyway. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I I try to I try to keep myself. You're in you're sometimes. a country music bigot, aren't you? Yeah, I kind of I kind of am. I well, I think part of the problem is because I I am a fan of more traditional styles right. of of country. Um, and I and at work, I have to listen to the new stuff all day because that's what everybody else wants to listen. Really? to. Really? And so I just feel like I feel like that a psychological warfare is just well, waged see, on me all day long. That's. <laughs> See, that therein lies the problem. You're being forced to listen to something that you don't normally listen to and probably wouldn't. And then over a period of time, there's a hate 
that starts to grow <laughs> inside you, and you start to just resent. And it's not their fault, man. They, the, the people that are making this music, man, it's not their fault. They don't. They don't know that they're you're being forced to like what essentially is turning into like being waterboarded every day at work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> they, 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 they don't, it's, it's a, only 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 psychologically waterboarded to their music when you just don't and it's, you know you're just jamming needles into jamming the paper clip, straightening them out, jamming into your leg just to try to make it through the day. Yeah, it, well, I you know it's I kind of equate it to like if I strap my my old do- dad, you know, he's a traditional country fan. If I strapped him to a chair and made him listen to Cannibal Corpse all day, well, oh my god, yeah, that is, would not this work. Is, no. <laughs> this is he would have the same reaction that I'm having to right. to what is being forced through my eardrums. But, right. Uh, and I'm not yeah. a big, but okay, I'm not so, a big heavy so, metal fan so, like uh, Cannibal Corpse. I'm not even like that's not even you know my thing either. But hey, that's what you like, man. That's not my thing either. Oh, but, okay. But, uh, you know, I was just, <laughs> I was just trying okay. to, uh, I was just trying to uh, uh, make a, uh, uh, I don't know, an analogy. I guess I'm not like that's not really my cup of tea either. But I was just trying to uh, draw a line. No, actually, no. The, the perfect line would be like <laughs> make him listen to um, uh, God, I can't even remember his name. Um. Oh God! I can't boom! I just totally lost the bit. The bit's gone. Man, I can't oh, remember man. his name. It's gone. the bass player, the former bass player from Queens of Stone Age, Oliveri. Nick, uh, Nick Oliveri, right? Is it Nick? Uh, uh oh yeah, yeah. Making okay. him listen to which ma- making him making like a, one of our dads listen to Nick Oliveri scream the way he sings. Do you know what I mean? Like, like oh, that... you may think I'm not worth a dollar, <laughs> okay. but I feel like a millionaire. Make him listen to that over and over. Just with the screaming, yeah. Because mm-hmm. I love that I, song. Yeah, I, I think that's probably. I love that song, but I mean, they wouldn't. You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. That's probably a more direct line, yeah. Than than you know, uh, the guy from Cannibal Corpse and his huge neck. Um. <laughs> oh, you're gonna make him do it live. <laughs> You're gonna make him actually see oh, the. Yeah, oh, okay, sure. I thought you were just gonna like strap him to a yeah. chair and just turn and crank the stereo. But if you're gonna make him watch it live, but oh, you're no, gonna no. give him the whole full effect. Oh yeah, you're man, you're totally. Yeah. The, oh yes, that's you're totally. I would never do that to my you, father. Yeah. I love him. Man, I was gonna say you. Do, <laughs> whoa, that's just that's man, that's awful. Now I might do that to my coworkers at this point. That but, you know, not my not my dad. <laughs> What's where's the radio? Oh, we don't have a radio. We got, we got, got a band today, actually. They're going to play for us all day. All day. That's right. All really? Day Who is it? Cannibal Corpse. Enjoy. Yep. Mm-hmm. Enjoy. I'm going to be outside. You're right? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Good times. Yep. yep. Well, that went in a direction I didn't expect, but it was... Hey, uh, we got to keep it... We got to keep go- it... Uh, just do a little improv there. Kind of keep it going. Yes, I love it. I really do. Um, but guess what? Um, we have reached that yes, point. Um, and so um, I'm going to do my classic uh, closing. Okay. Uh, because uh, um, everyone's already turned this off. Right. Um, because I ins- either they already got to work or because I insulted, uh, insulted Luke Bryan. And so now they've, they've all shut it off and now... Um, this is the part where we have, to, mark say, is we have to say goodbye. It is, and it's it heartbreaking, is. isn't yes. it? I'm a little. I feel a little empty. As 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 I tell everyone, like I, the hour once the hour's up for me, it never. It's like oh, we just got yeah, going. right. We just start. We just we just started with this man. We could we could have done another two hours flat. No problem. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, the first episode I did uh, with uh, Ryan McCaffrey. Oh yeah, that's another thing I need to mention. You're you're the third Ryan. Oh, wow. The third yeah, Ryan in like what like eight shows. That sounds like that sounds yeah. like a title for like, like some sci-fi type action, like the third Ryan clone. <laughs> the, the third Ryan. The third Ryan that that was do, that had a pedal had a pedal business, business just like the that. other Ryans. Yeah. yeah. Da, da, da. <laughs> Coming um, soon to NBC this fall. <laughs> the clones. The, the, the Ryan clones. clones. You're waiting for the Force Awakens, but Actually, you know what? You're gonna get the third Ryan first, so forget about it. You know what? I don't think. Yeah, you know, I don't think I could uh, put 
besides that you guys' name was Ryan and that and that you guys all have pedal companies, I, I these are very different Ryans. I don't think we could I don't think they're no, no, probably I'm not. pretty sure they're distinct they're <laughs> they're distinct people, I'm okay. pretty sure. I haven't listened to the other uh, Ryans. I'd have yeah. to I'd have to go back and listen to um I I actually need to go and listen to all your podcasts now. Um so the first Ryan is Ryan McCaffrey and uh I, and he runs McCaffrey mm-hmm. Audio. And and I the next Ryan was uh Ryan Ratajski uh, from Fuzz Rocious. Oh, and his episode will be coming out here uh very soon. Um, that'll be the next one that gets posted. Yeah, I've heard definitely. I, I've been yeah, man, Fuzz Rocious. They make some really good stuff. I've heard of McCaffrey Audio, but I know Fuzz Rocious has been around oh uh, quite a while, and they're they're in Jersey, I think. I think that's where they're at. Yeah, they're in Jersey, and uh, yeah, they. I just, I just got the their afterlife reverb, and that thing is wicked. Really, it's so oh, fun. Man. Yes, um, they got some other stuff that I want, but you know, I'm trying to restrain myself. Uh, it's, it's difficult, but I am trying. There's gonna be like half, there's like ten, twenty years from now, there's gonna be like halfway houses for people with gear, gear problems. <laughs> yeah, there is. All right, All man. Right, dude. Well. I better we better call yeah, it good. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so thanks for coming hey. on. Hey. And uh Thank you, man. I appreciate uh, it. You know. Yeah, no problem. So for Ryan McKay, this is Blake Wyland. Uh good luck and good tones. One last thing before we totally sign off here. I just want to remind you that if you do any shopping at Stringjoy, that's Stringjoy guitar strings made in Nashville. That will help me out as well. As I've said for years, I'm heavily involved in that company, and I really do think they're making the best products on the market. So if you would like to try custom strings, go to ToneMob.com slash StringJoy and check them out today. I seriously, seriously, seriously love what the team down there is doing. I help them out with all kinds of things, and by you supporting them, you are also supporting me as well. And hey, you need some strings, so why not get some custom strings just for your guitar and playing style? Again, the link for that is tonemob.com stringjoy, and that will take you right to their website, and you can do all your shopping through there, and that will help everyone involved out. So thank you very much. Talk to you next time. We are brought to you by the wonderful folks at Gun Street Wiring Shop. Yes, Gun Street Wiring Shop. I've talked about them before. I used to say based out of Bend, Oregon, but guess what? Sean moved to my neck of the woods. Sean's in Portland. Sean is awesome and has helped me with a bunch of stuff lately. And if you have wiring needs for your guitar, he can help you too. If you want to get weird with it, he can get weird. If you just need to spruce things up a little bit, there's your guy. He takes all the guesswork out of doing your guitar wiring, and he makes it simple and his customer service is top-notch, and I can't say enough good things about Gunstreet as a company. I really respect Sean and what he's all about, and the product is top-notch. I've got three different guitars that now have Gunstreet harnesses in them, and I could not be happier. So go to GunstreetWiringShop.com and check them out.